Over the past 30 years, our region has reimagined and remade its economy. The basis of the economic transformation has been innovation. Over the past 10 years, Carnegie Mellon University has been offering a unique professional degree that encourages innovation, design thinking, and the management of the innovation process. It cuts across engineering, industrial design, and business. The university recently celebrated the anniversary with a symposium on innovating in the next decade. Jonathan Kagan is back with us. He's professor of mechanical engineering at CMU and head of the program. And Jenna Reed is a master's student in the program and an employee of Alcoa. And welcome. Good to see you. Great to see you, Bill. Welcome back. Every 10 years we bring you down, right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, congratulations. I remember when you were here to, to talk about, we well, had your book out at that time, Creating Breakthrough Products, now in its second edition. Uh, but this was a really new phenomenon, this whole new way of thinking about design and manufacturing and product development, right? Right, right. And, and so many companies now are, are really aware of the need to find a way to be innovative and a way to have a method to do that. And, and any way you can sum up sort of what the method is? Sure. So, you know, rather than talking about we need innovation and there's sort of a framework that's out there, you have to actually do it. What we have is a formal, repeated, repeatable methodology that we teach to our students, and part of it is highlighted in this book, which allows people to uncover opportunities where there's new products that should exist in the marketplace, if there's a need or desire for that opportunity, for that product. And then how do you go about understanding that opportunity who are the stakeholders, what are their needs, what are their desires, and how do you formalize that so that you can then develop a solution. And that solution could be a physical product, could be software, it could be a service, it could be a system. Hmm. So, okay, it's beyond just the, the iPhone or something like that. So give me a for instance. Of something beyond just the iPhone. Yeah. So, you know, any services you can think of, if you look at our, our current um, uh, technology on the Internet, all of those are services that have to be developed. If you think about uh, any company right now that's even making physical products usually has a service around it, and any service has physical products, so you have this ecosystem of physical and service that has to work together. Okay, and, and what got you interested in this? Well, the program itself offers the ability to you know, have business courses, design courses, and engineering courses. So it was really a comprehensive experience to further my education in product development. And Alcoa, you, uh, working there, you began to see a need for this kind of an approach to innovation? Oh, absolutely. A lot of times uh, companies are innovating uh, based on uh, not necessarily uh, the needs of the customer, but you know these ideas that come from much higher up the chain. So this bunch of engineers sitting around talking, right? <laughs> right. Or there's a something else that triggers it. You know, well, we think we need to do this, and this really gives a concrete approach to making sure that we're going in the right market. So, like innovation for innovation's sake, we have to be doing something new. So let's tweak this or add a color there, right? That's right. not the right approach, I guess, in your thought. Right. And I think you know, so many times companies think innovation should happen, but don't know how to do it. And it really has to be driven by who are the stakeholders and what is it that they need in the marketplace? What is their pain? What is their desire? And if you can uncover that, and then you can start to formalize what that means, then you can develop products that will meet that gap. God, it doesn't seem to be so fundamental, though. I mean, honestly, isn't it always about what the customer wants? But, but typically, that's not the way these decisions get made. Is that because of silos within organizations or how the process works? I think it's a combination of silos, but also people just weren't taught that they can do this. They didn't understand it, and they still don't. The, it it's seems the design like magic. people's thing. Or, that's or it's what magic. It's just going to happen. Okay. You know, we'll, yeah. we'll innovate something. We'll go do it. Huh. But you really have to have a process that you can follow through on so that you can improve your likelihood of success. Yeah, well, what do you think you've gotten out of participating in the, in, in, the, in the program, working on the MBA? Well, I bring actually a lot to the table now because I have this different perspective. And I have now design experience and business experience as well as the mechanical engineering experience now to I have like this broad approach. And so when we come into a situation I'm often thinking a little bit differently than most. So I'm the first one to maybe raise the flag and say, have we considered this? Have we looked at this? And it's been very valuable thus far. Wow, I would think. It really gives you an edge as you're working within that corporate environment. And the good part, you're doing this part-time, right? You're not a full-time, obviously you're working in Alcoa, so you're not a full-time master's student at CMU. Right. Yeah, so I am doing this on a part-time basis, but uh, my employer fully supports my, you know, being a part of the Carnegie Mellon program. Well, wow. is this something new for, for CMU, too, to make this kind of thing available? Well, so we have 
uh, arguably the best students in the world, literally, at this program. We're one of the highest ranked programs in the world in terms of product development. But what we've done is realize that there's such a need in the Pittsburgh area and we can offer that. So we found a way to take our program that's normally a one-year full-time program and let students that are working at Alcoa or any other company in the region, and there are others who have done this as well, come to the program and finish it over roughly two years. Wow, okay. So we welcome people in the community to apply to the program if this is something that's their passion. Well, that's great. It certainly is a hot thing. It was funny, I was at another meeting uh, last week and somebody was talking about this whole phenomenon of merging design and engineering and business together. And I said, well, Sam, you've been on that case for a decade now. But what's really cool is now there's an opportunity for a whole new generation of people to get involved who don't have the time for a full year at school. Right, right. And as you mentioned, you know, we've been doing this for a while, actually for quarter of a century in some ways in terms of the beginnings of this. So the program is now 10 years old and we've just celebrated our 10th anniversary. But uh, you know, we are the only program of its kind that has top engineering, design, and business schools that are part of this program. Really cool. Great to hear it happening here in our region. Jonathan Kagan from Carnegie Mellon, Jenna Reed from CMU and Alcoa. Thanks so much. Thank you, Bill. Yeah. And we'll be back in a minute with a little dollars and cents. Stay with us.